Let's bring in our expert panel to discuss this uh, developing situation. Grisha Kubovic, former head of the civilian department in the IDF's Code and Kogat, and in Ramallah, Palestinian security analyst Mohammed Najib. Thank you, gentlemen, both for joining me today. So, Grisha, I'll start with you. How much Israel should be concerned from this uh, terror attack yesterday in the central Israel? Is it a one off or is it a trend that we'll see more and more? Israel should be very, very concerned from the trend in the West Bank that started last year. If we will count the Palestinian Authority officials that were uh, killed as terrorists holding illegal weapons, opening fire on Israelis, the number will be 52. This is the year 2023. It means the same Palestinian officials that have this responsibility on their shoulders to lead security and civil coordination are the ones who are actually leading terrors. Unfortunately, also many relatives and sons of PA officials are also a part of this terror trend or let's say the motivation and the spirit that is coming from Gaza, from Hamas, Mass that lead the narrative of Mukawama resistance. Now, a question to the Palestinian Authority, a question to the people of the West Bank. Is this reality in Gaza, is the reality that you want to see in the West Bank? And this is a question that they should ask themselves. So we'll ask this, uh, that question to uh, Muhammad Najib. You've heard Grisha here. Uh, asking whether, you know, the West Bank uh, people want the same situation uh, that we're witnessing in Gaza since October 7th? Actually, uh, the West Bank didn't participate or took part in October 7th uh, attack or events uh, there. And uh, despite that, the Israeli heavy cracked down on the West Bank uh, set up uh, 750 checkpoints that uh, restricted the freedom of movement for Palestinians. And uh, every night, every day, there are raids of the West Bank, refugees camps, town and cities, arresting more than 5,900 Palestinians, including women and children. And 2,800 of them were transferred to the administrative detention, which means detention without trial uh, and uh, no uh, uh, sending them to the court. So uh, the, more than 340 also were killed because the Palestinians say that the reservists of the IDF are serving the West Bank and the easy bush bull that trigger and shoot against the Palestinians. So this uh, increasing of uh, and escalation of violence came from the IDF and from the settlers' violence against the Palestinians, uh, their properties and their lands. And uh, also, there is a massive anger mounted among the Palestinians for what's happening in Gaza, and they feel helpless. They can't send any donations, as in the previous wars, as Israel they closed the crossing borders with Gaza, so they cannot send food supplies, medical supplies, evacuate the injured uh, Palestinians from Gaza to be uh, trans, uh, treated, medically treated in the West Bank. So there's uh, a huge amount of uh, anger here, and uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority, despite that, we saw it today. A clashes between Palestinians and the uh, Palestinian security services in Jenin when they try to uh, uh, clean uh, the uh, uh, planted uh, bomb devices in the uh, streets of Jenin as well as a few days ago in Tolkarim. But because the uh, repetitive and uh, continuous Israeli incursions of areas A in the West Bank, that make it an uh, embarrassment for the Palestinian Authority to operate against uh, the yes, people. Yes, but, but, but Mohammed, I, I hear you carefully, but I think we should start on October 7th and the massacre that took place in Israel and the raping and the beheading and the burning of people alive and the kidnapping of, uh, at the time, 250 people, 100, 136 of which are still uh, captives in Gaza. And we're seeing polls uh, in the West Bank, where you stay, uh, in which 80% plus of the Palestinian people in the West Bank, uh, mind you, people, some of your friends that have been fro uh, thrown from high scrapers in Gaza by Hamas people, 80% in the West Bank are supporting what Hamas did in Israel. So how can Israel look at them and say we are partners? Uh, actually, uh, the Palestinians uh, uh, sympathize with anyone who attacking uh, by the Israelis, targeting by Israel, or also resist Israel because here they feel are helpless. But also, they are uh, a ninety percent call for the uh, uh, that recent Abbas has failed in his position and he must leave the position and. Uh, 60 percent said that they should dismantle the Palestinian Authority and other the same percent about corruption here. So they have views about everything, about Israel, about Abbas, about the Palestinian Authority, about Fatah, 
about uh, uh, Marwan Barghouti, about everyone. So this is they have uh, perspectives about that. But this is could be temporary because of what's happening. Because they see watching the TV the uh, casualties among civilians and they feel they are helpless. But it wasn't the situation before 7 October that the Palestinians were spent. They were 2,000, uh, 200,000 Palestinian workers work every day in Israel and they bring six million shekels for the Palestinian economy every day. Now they are staying here, do nothing. And also Israel doesn't allow the uh, yes. transfer the tax money to the Palestinian Authority. So the economic situation here is uh, very catastrophic. I, uh, Grisha, um, obviously we feel bad for that, but still you, we can under, you probably can understand Israeli, Israelis were afraid after uh, October 7th to, 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 you know, to bring in Palestinian workers and, and, you know? You know, I've been in those debates... Uh, for 30 years. For 30 years, not only in Israel, but also in the West Bank, in Jordan, in Egypt, and all over Europe and the States. And I hear the same excuses again and again and again. It's about time. The Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian leadership, take responsibility. If they want to build a state, take they a side. should not only take a side, take responsibility first of all. You know, it's so easy to say, we blame you, we blame you, it's the settlers, it's the IDF, but where is the Palestinian Authority? They were supposed to deal with terror, because this terror that their, their leaders support, nobody condemned it. Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Ashtaya, the Palestinian ministers, nobody condemned what happened on October 7th. Nobody condemned the massacre. Nobody condemned the, 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 the fact that Hamas beheaded babies. And this is something that any human being, and it doesn't matter who is he, Israeli, Palestinian, Muslim, Christian, should do and condemn. And this is a responsibility that must be taken by the Palestinian Authority. This is number one. Number two, it's about time that the Palestinian Authority and the people stop whining. Israel and Israel and Israel. Yes, 140,000 Palestinian workers worked in Israel. 90,000 with permits and the rest are illegal. 32,000 Palestinians worked in the settlements inside the West Bank. Yes, they brought more than 6 million shekels a day to the Palestinian economy. But the Palestinian economy could build their own economy by taking responsibility. If they would just develop Jalami industrial area, uh, uh, the industrial area in Tarkumiya, those things that I've been dealing with for 20 years, Years. But unfortunately, the money went to different paths and to other directions. They need to take responsibility. They should condemn the events, take responsibility, and do what they did in Jenin, not only in Jenin, but all over the West Bank. But Grisha, I want to make it hard on you. Um, both ends, the Palestinians and us Israelis, uh, should opt for a better future. Um, so we can argue forever, as you've said, you've been in those argument, uh, arguments or discussions for 30 years. But we can argue forever who should make the first move. They should apologize or we should bring your, in workers, etc. What, what should Israel do? So I want to be clear about In it, order okay? not, to, not, not to turn the West Bank into Gaza because it's not in our favor as well. Well, first of all, even before the events, even before the war, uh, you know, I've been doing that uh, since I retired from the IDF, leading tours and lectures, and I've said uh, six years ago that if there will be elections in the West Bank, then Hamas will win the election. Easily. Easily, yes. It was then. Why? Because Hamas are the heroes of the Palestinian street. Unfortunately, Mahmoud Abbas achieved nothing. But we need to blame ourselves also. We need to have some responsibility. Who we are, when I'm talking about our leaders, to say that a different leader is irrelevant, that the Palestinian chosen president is irrelevant. So we also contributed to this situation. And we should stop, uh, continue with the blame game. We are in a total different reality. Because if the war in the Middle East, and I'm not exaggerating, but we are on the edge of maybe a higher, a, a, a large escalation all over the Middle East, and if it will happen, happen, we are, will not be the only ones that will suffer, but the Palestinian residents in the West Bank will also suffer. So both sides, we need to take a stand, put things behind us, shake hands, and do things for the benefit of the people of the State of Israel and the Palestinians in the West Bank, and be rational. Hamad, what do you answer to that? Yes, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the decision in Israel nowadays is not for the Prime Minister Netanyahu, it's for Benigvir and Smotrich. He mentioned that uh, a few days ago in the U.S. Secretary of State, Mita Abbas here in Ramallah, 
He promised him that Netanyahu has agreed to transfer the uh, deducted uh, tax money and all the tax money to the Palestinian Authority to revive the Palestinian economy and to prevent its collapse. But uh, because Smotrich doesn't want to transfer the money, so they can't transfer the money. So who lead the Middle East and lead the region is Tamar ben Gvir and Smotrich. And I don't think that those uh, be people of peace or can achieve the vision of the general at the studio, because it's very difficult. In the past, there were a chance, and the, the leaders today in Israel are doing a lot and contributing a lot. And you see how Israel become more isolated or unwelcome because the regional country. Jordan, King Abdullah II of Jordan, also is unhappy with what's going here and with the Israeli policies. It's not the Palestinians who blame Israel, but also Egyptian, the Arab countries, the closest ally for Israel also. So the situation are difficult, and uh, I think uh, uh, Israel try uh, to use the force against the Palestinians for the past 56 years and achieve nothing. And uh, they don't uh, try to achieve uh, and use the uh, method of and peace and uh, uh, withdraw the Israeli occupation from the West Bank and allow the Palestinians to have their political rights. All the time, they transfer the political conflict to become a humanitarian, give some permits to Palestinians and feeding them before killing but them. But Mohammed, I, 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 I listen to you. I listen to you, and 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 and, and you keep on saying uh, uh, the same things that have been said for days, weeks, months, years. Uh, etc. And if you want, and I believe you do, uh, to bring the, back those 150, about 1,000 uh, Palestinian workers over here and to, to gain, regain control of the Gaza Strip from Hamas after this war. Uh, so tell me something that Israelis can hook to or believe that they can hook to in the future so we'll have a better future because we're still in, those, in this blame game. And it won't lead us anywhere, not you and not us. Yes, I agree with you. I think if there is a political hope for the Palestinians, that will uh, contribute to end the problem between the Palestinians and the Israelis. I want to tell you something. Here in Ramallah, the prices of the vegetables is getting very high. And when I asked why this happens, they told me that the uh, Palestinian farmers engineers sent all the vegetables to Israel because the Israeli farmers are busy in the IDF and they cannot do that to the Palestinians. So it's like all the time they depend on each other, even in the war time. I said all this war time, the Palestinian farmers uh, export their vegetables from Jenin and the North uh, Jordan Valley to Israel. It's that is the situation, even in the war time. So it was uh, always there is a hope, but uh, the situation at the moment, they just try to give the humanitarian assistance here and there, and it didn't work. I hope that both leadership here and in Israel. Uh, reach a point and agreement that they have to uh, try the peace uh, path, not only the uh, yes. uh, violence. And Muhammad, the last question. Last question, I'll, and, and I'll refer the same, and, uh, the same question to you, uh, um, uh, Grisha. Convince me why or how uh, the PA should and can take control over the Gaza Strip the day after the war, because Israel obviously opposes it strongly, because we see the voices coming out of Ramallah. Mohammed? Ah, sorry, I thought that Go ahead. for the general, yeah. Uh, yes, the Palestinian Authority was supporting the uh, health uh, sector and the education sector, sector in Gaza and pay for the electricity and for the services in Gaza and the salaries of its employees who don't show up at their position since uh, Hamas uh, military subjugation in 2007. But uh, the Palestinian Authority said it's ready to go there and to take its responsibility and uh, so, uh, but it's a uh, condition that to have a political hope, a political to revive the visa process, not just to be a policeman, uh, do the uh, dirty jobs on behalf of Israel. So that's what the Israelis uh, think the Palestinian Authority role. But the Palestinians said if there is a visa process and the promise of Palestinian state, then they are ready to take their responsibilities and go there to Gaza and to take uh, control after the, the end of this war. Yes, Grisha. Um, is there a future for the PA in Gaza? The future of the Palestinian Authority is near Israel. No Arab country uh, will accept the Palestinians. We see what Egypt did. Uh, the first act that Assisi did, he blocked the border between Gaza and Egypt, saying uh, a very uh, nice narrative. I want to make sure that there will be no another Nakba so they will stay in Gaza. So Israel will not, I don't know, uh, push them somewhere outside of Gaza. Yeah, and we understand that this is... Uh, 
This is not the real reason. Now, the same thing will happen with Jordan. Actually, Assisi and the king of Jordan met twice to make sure that something like that will not happen. So we need to be clear. The Palestinian future is near Israel. Now, a little bit about facts. In June 2007, Hamas conquered the Gaza Strip from the unity government. Uh, since then, Mahmoud Abbas continued say, sending 43% of his budget, and some of it came from Israel from the taxes that we collected for the PA, from the, for the a revenue. A mistake by him? Uh, he understood it's a mistake, so he, impl he implemented sanctions on Hamas in Gaza. Actually, he punished the people of Gaza, so they will reach to a reconciliation because this was the only way to get back to Gaza. And Mahmoud Abbas stated he will not ride Israeli tanks back to Gaza. And I'm sure that if he will be asked to go back to Gaza, he will have demands from the state of Israel when it comes to the West Bank. So the government of Israel understands that, so nobody wants him to go there. But if he would be smart, and he, if he wants to be remembered in Palestinian history and to take a side and stand, as you mentioned, he should say, guys, I'm the president, I want to take responsibility, and we will lead a change together. And the moment I'll do that, that will be a real proof to the Israeli society that he means what he says, and that will be, the, let's say, the first step for a better future in the future. As you well know, Grisha, my friend, People don't tend to change, especially not at the age of 87. So the chances for that... One comment to that. Did you know that Mahmoud Abbas' da uh, dad lived until the age of 102? Okay. Ah, so we have what to expect. Okay, yes. Mohammed Najib in Ramallah, Grisha Yakubovic here in the studio with me. Gentlemen, both thank you so much for you. attending this evening. Thank